Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Paul Fletcher. I am a certified master teacher certified by the Tao Academy, and I'm very happy to be connecting with you today. Today we're going to be focusing on forgiveness for relationships, and I think that it will meet a lot of people's needs. There is, of course, quite a few people out there that have relationships, some of them good, some of them not so wonderful, and some of them they kind of just hang with us and they bother us for days, weeks, months, years sometimes. So uh, it can make a difference to have some significant guidance to assist us. So I encourage you to stick around and uh, enjoy the value of this practice today. Most of the wisdom will be directly from Dr. and Master Shah's books, uh, but I won't be opening any books today, but um, you can learn quite a bit. One of the books I would recommend for you is called Divine Relationships. That's the name of the book, Divine Relationships. And it's a bright red book, very pretty cover. Um, I think it was written in about 2009 or 2010. It is one of my favorite books. And it has a tremendous amount of practices and wisdom. Um, because the wisdom is great, but you need the practical application so that you get the benefits of the wisdom. And so um, I do recommend that to uh, anybody out there. I don't have the book to show you, but you can uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, just type in uh, Divine Relationships and then Master Shah and it should pop right up. Yeah. Let's see who's joined us so far today. So welcome Juliana, welcome Jen, welcome Bursin, welcome Wes, Aloha Dan. Welcome, Norma. Aloha, Krista and Teresa. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome, Hina. And aloha, Lisa and Natalie. Uh -huh. Thank you, Kristen, for your presence. Kristen Rojas has been my right hand for over three years assisting on the Facebooks. Thank you for your service, Kristen. Tracy, aloha. And welcome also to Rosetta. Uh, aloha, Pat. And welcome, Shelly. Uh, Margie, aloha. So thank you all for your presence. <clears throat> and I've been actually wanting to do this live stream for almost a month now. Uh, or should I say I've been received the guidance for it. Um, so I think it's very pertinent that a lot of people uh, understand the value of the significant and sincere forgiveness. And uh, so we'll do, you know, 10 or so, maybe 15 minutes of some education on the value of a, of, a, of a deep and authentic forgiveness. And then we'll actually do another 15 minutes on the actual practice. So by the end, you should feel a whole lot lighter. That's the intention. Welcome also to Vanessa. Uh, thank you all for your presence. Thank you for clicking the share button, letting the people know about this. So let's go ahead and connect. Placing our hands either in prayer position or the soul light, soul service hand position, which is basically the prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. And it's called the hand mudra, for those that are not familiar. Mudra means placement, okay, hand placement. Uh, and so the placement, in this case, the left hand drops in front of the heart center. Somebody says they can barely hear me. That's because my microphone wasn't on, so thank you, Jen. <coughs> Welcome, Bozena. That should be much better. So, um, sorry for those that turned your speaker up. You can turn them down now. So, uh, let us connect. And I'll invite in all the beings of light. Dear the divine, the Tao and the source. Dear our mother and father, Shurfus. I love you, honor you, respect you, bow my head to you. I invite you to please be present at this time. We ask our heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints to be present. We ask all the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, and ascendant masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, and saints to please be present. We're extremely grateful for your unconditional service. You serve us so much and we don't even see it. You save our lives. You wake us up in the mornings. You guide us through the day. You bless us throughout the day. You keep us sane. You bless us to overcome our challenges. You bless our finances. You bless our relationships. And we don't even know it. So let us thank you first, the divine, the Tao, the source, and all the beings of light for your unconditional service. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask for your presence to assist us today specifically with releasing relationship blockages and assist us with opening our heart so that we can move forward in our lives, uh, either in the existing relationships we have, make them better, or release the ones that bring us unpleasant experiences. Thank you. Dear the song of love, peace, and harmony, could you please be present? Please turn on. And as we sing the song of love, peace, and harmony, we ask that you radiate your love, especially to all those that we have relationship blockages with. Thank you. So let us sing one round to fully connect, to bring our soul, hearts, minds, and bodies into the same space. Lo la lo la li. Lo la lo la la li. Lo la lo la li lo la. Lo la li lo la. Lo la li lo la. Wo ai wo xian er ling. Wo ai zhan nan li. Ang ling rong her mo shi shang. Xiong ai ping on her she. Xiong ai ping on her she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, Gina. Welcome also, Kristen Strachan. Thanks for your presence. So today we're going to be focusing on forgiveness in relationships. Like I said, I'll teach about 10, 15 minutes, just so you have a deep understanding of the nature, importance, and value. And then we're going to do a nice, good, long uh, forgiveness session, okay? So you'll get lots and lots of light today, lots of release of blockages. So Master Shah, who is uh, the main spiritual teacher I have studied under, and I've studied under quite a few, and the reason I, I continue to study under Master Shah for over 10 years now is because he continually releases higher and higher wisdom and practices and opportunities, welcome Bazan, to, um, to enhance our lives and to release suffering. You know, we want to release our suffering and relationships do not have to be filled with suffering. Matter of fact, uh, I gave a, a live stream just last Thursday, so if you missed it, go back and watch it, on how to apply soul conferencing and you can apply it for relationships uh, I applied it for finance I gave you examples of how to apply it for finances and how to apply it for um, uh, what was it for maybe it was relationships but in any case that's one way in which you can improve relationships this is another very important way welcome Priti welcome uh, Div Jod welcome Alejandra so when we work with a deeper understanding of forgiveness, the way Master Shah has brought this wisdom to us, we can literally move mountains, not kidding. And so moving the mountains of our relationship pain and suffering is highly, highly important. <clears throat> relationship and relationship suffering is often directly related to our heart chakra, okay? And so when we uh, our inner relationship, our heart is open, right? We give all of our love. We give everything in hopes that we're going to receive in return. And sometimes it doesn't work out that way, does it? We just give, 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 give until we're out of battery, until we're out of life force energy. And then the person whoosh, goes, okay? And then how long does it take us to recover and refill the battery? And then we're very gun shy about other relationships. That's one possible way in which relationships are very unpleasant. And other times we might just be in a relationship with a loved one, a uh, husband, wife, you know, significant other, whatever it might be. Uh, and we we do good and then we have hassles. And then we do good and then we have hassles. Or a relationship could be our children, 
right? We could get along with two of them, but one of them, they're the black sheep in the family. We just don't understand them. We can't get along with them no matter what, and it's all their fault. Wrong. Um, so relationships could be any of these that really bring suffering to us. The suffering starts here, and then it affects here. And when it affects here, it affects the energy and matter of our life. Because the nature of the flow of life is soul, then heart, then uh, the mind gets impacted. And when the mind's impacted, which is typically negative, that impacts the energy. So our energy is zapped, right? We don't feel like doing anything. We just, you know, we can cry, we complain, whatever. And that impacts our physical world. So it impacts our job, it impacts our health and wellness, our physical health and wellness. It impacts everything. So forgiveness assists us with clearing the heart blockages, which then releases the mind suffering, which then changes our energetic uh, approach to life, which then fixes everything on the physical level that's been negatively impacted by the heart block instead as a result of a relationship issue. Okay? So forgiveness is extraordinarily powerful, not something you want to uh, uh, joke with. It is something that if you do it every day, it's not enough. You should do it twice a day. You have suffering, do more forgiveness. The wisdom applies to everything, guys. If you have financial suffering, do more forgiveness practice. You got health issues, do more forgiveness practice. Okay, do deeper forgiveness practice. The wisdom doesn't change. This is how you remove suffering, I tell you. <laughs> Many stories I can give you. I'm not going to right now. I'm going to stay focused on this. So when we do forgiveness practice, we want to do it from a depth of understanding. Many of you have heard it before. Great. Maybe you'll get a deeper comprehension this time. Welcome, Samita. Welcome, Nina. Welcome, Candy. Welcome, Lisa Zarniak. Uh, Teresa, welcome. If I missed your name, welcome. Thank you for coming. So uh, forgiveness has three sides three there's three sides of that coin try a three-sided coin right self forgiveness one of the most important offering forgiveness asking forgiveness aloha natalie self forgiveness why is it one of the most important because we are our own worst enemy we can be going, I could have done this, I should have done that. What a, what's wrong with me? Why did this person go off and, 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 and have sex with somebody else? Blah, 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 blah. That's when our mind starts growing with us because our heart is hurt. And then the, because the mind's growing with us, it impacts our energy, impacts our matter. So you have to be conscientious. Self-forgiveness is extremely important. You have to forgive yourself, right? And that doesn't mean I forgive myself for being an idiot. No. <laughs> You have to love yourself. I love myself. There was great value in a relationship, but this person didn't have enough integrity. Or, I love myself. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm doing the best I can. And I, and I will continue to improve my self-love and my communication with others. Always have a positive conversation to yourself. Okay, Self-forgiveness. That's the first forgiveness. Welcome, Isabel. The second forgiveness is offering forgiveness. Offering forgiveness is very difficult sometimes. It can be extraordinarily difficult because that SOB, that jerk, that da 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 da, I will never forgive them. I can't believe they did this. And it's very difficult, right? Because we have so much anger and err about what they did to us. Okay. How does it feel standing behind the jail cage, rattling the bar, saying, this is what they did to me? How has that served you so far? Has that helped you to open your heart? No. And has it helped your monkey mind when it spirals? If you see somebody that looks like them, it drives you crazy. You see them drive by, it drives you crazy. Right? Anger, hatred, all of this built-up crap is not serving you. So you have to offer forgiveness. And I'll teach you how to do it from a much higher spiritual perspective. Okay. The third forgiveness is asking forgiveness. Okay. Well, when I do something wrong, I ask for forgiveness. That's certainly the right thing to do. Well, no, I'm not talking about the obvious. I'm talking about the 
not so obvious. Asking forgiveness is also to those people that have not treated you well. In the wisdom that Master Shah brings to us, he shares that uh, the root cause of all suffering, in this case relationship suffering, is an accumulation of our negative messages, an accumulation of our negative information. What is accumulated? How did we accumulate it? We accumulated it by our own thoughts, words, and actions towards all souls, not just the ones that we have relationship issues with, and towards the one we have relationships with. Um, you might be a great person, they might be a not so pleasant person, but at least in the Master Shah's wisdom, he believes, and so do I, you don't have to, that we live more than one life, that uh, we have, we're here to grow our soul and return to the source, and in that process we have many experiences. Now, if you uh, follow the traditional Western teachings where one time around you're done, that's okay. Uh, in the Bible it says that the sins of the father are visited upon the son. That means the mistakes the relatives make could affect us. So either way it works. So uh, working with this understanding, when we offering forgiveness, we are recognizing, when we're asking forgiveness, we are recognizing that we may have mis made mistakes in previous times, especially with this person that we're having difficulty with. You could be in a current relationship, you love the person, they love you, but it's always cat and dog, cat and dog, cat and dog. You never know when to love or hate. You're always at each other's throat, right? But you love each other. Love, hate, love, hate. So how do you fix that? You guys have been together many times before. This is not your first rodeo. So those who actually wake up and smell the roses use forgiveness practice to solve those kinds of problems. And you do a forgiveness practice silently by yourself so that you can open your heart. So in offering forgiveness, you are coming from a higher spiritual perspective, not the they did this to me perspective, which will continually keep you inside your uh, your bar cell, your 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 prison cell, and you will not be able to open your heart, and you will not be able to heal. So you have to truly forgive, and the spiritual perspective on that is to recognize that you or your ancestors may have made some significant errors before, significant uh, brought some significant negative messages and information, comments, communications thoughts, words, and actions <clears throat> that have come back around and landed in your face to remind you how painful it was had those same painful things been delivered to others. So if you hurt somebody's knees, you might have sore knee pain. If you uh, spoke very negative and unpleasant things, cheated on others, miscommunicated with others, then those same miscommunications and negative things might be coming back to you. This is the higher road, the higher comprehension, higher wisdom. Therefore, Offering forgiveness is important as well. So to repeat, self-forgiveness, asking forgiveness, offering forgiveness. All three are exceedingly important. Okay? Uh, welcome Nisha. Welcome uh, Ilona. Uh, welcome Pyramid. Aloha Ranja. Welcome Becky. Uh, welcome uh, Jonathan. And welcome uh, Sarah Marie. So now we're going to do a forgiveness practice. When we do a forgiveness practice, <clears throat> you want to always incorporate the four powers. Where we place our hands is where the healing goes. That's body power. The words that we chant or, or the, the mantra that we repeat uh, has a positive impact. So if we even repeat the word divine forgiveness, that's not our own forgiveness. That's the divine's forgiveness. So simply repeating the beautiful mantra of divine forgiveness from your heart uh, is very important. It brings a vibration and a frequency. Remember, uh, all of our suffering, whether it's relationship suffering or any form of suffering, is as a result of our accumulation of negative thoughts, words, actions, our accumulation of negative energies, negative messages, negative information. So we want what? Positive messages, positive information, positive action. We want positivity and divine forgiveness in this example carries a very positive message it carries a divine frequency and when you bring enough uh, higher frequency it overrides the lower one 
shifts it, changes it. So it's a common sense comprehension. So two of the four powers are where we place our hands is where our healing goes. So we're going to place our hands over our heart center because when we have relationship blockages, that's the center that's always impacted negatively. Okay. So your hands will go over your heart center. The sound power we will be using is this a chanting mantra of divine forgiveness. We might also use divine love. Uh, uh, the soul power and the um, creative visualization is important as well. So the mind power, using your mind, we all know what you think is what you become. You think positive things, they come towards you. So when we apply mind power, we can visualize uh, a healing in that relationship. That person can be here, you can be here, you might not have liked each other for years, but you see each other maybe bowing to each other, forgiving each other, maybe hugging, releasing, saying, I'm sorry. That's an example of a quality positive visualization. Okay? Uh, soul power. This is the fourth of the three powers. So we did body power, mind power, sound power, the mantra, soul power. Soul power is the most important of setting yourself for this forgiveness practice. Now, what I'm doing today should be repeated every day, twice a day. How long? People say, how long? I'm always shocked by that question. Well, wouldn't you want to do it until the problem is resolved? Kind of makes sense, right? And wouldn't it be wise to continue doing it so that everything is smooth going forward with that same person? That's how long you do it, right? So you do it until the problem is solved. Very simple. Soul power is calling all the beings of light, right? Who is the beings of light? Our source creator. We ask the source creator to come. Angels, healing angels, archangels. You're over in India? Great. Call Vishnu. Call Krishna. Call whoever your, your deities are that you align to. You're in the West? Call Jesus. Call Mother Mary. You're in the East? Call Buddha. Call Kuan Yin. They're all beings of light. You know, in heaven, they're brothers and sisters. They work together. You call Buddha, Jesus comes. You call Jesus, Buddha comes. They don't separate like we do here on earth. Call them all. They are beings of light because they want to serve. So ask them, would you please? I'm so honored. Would you please come? We will do that together. This is the four powers, okay? We also, it's important to call the soul of the individual or individuals that you're doing the relationship forgiveness with. And it's important to call the soul of the, wait for it, very important, you should write it down, call the soul of the relationship itself. For example, you and your husband, you've been around many times before, this is not your only rodeo. So that means that in a previous time, maybe he was the wife, you were the husband. Uh, maybe you were brothers and sisters, mother, father, who knows? Okay, uh, but in any case, each time you played a different role, there was a relationship, right? And that relationship is the uh, is the carrier of the accumulation of all of your experiences. So that accumulated experience brings itself into this life and creates either a positive, neutral, or unpleasant set of experiences for you to resolve. So call the soul of the relationship between you and this person because we want to do forgiveness for all the time not just this one that you currently remember got it very important wisdom okay so let us do this <clears throat> body power sit up straight feet flat on the floor we bring our hands in front of our heart center one palm on the heart center, the other palm pointed towards heaven. So heaven's frequency can come in and bless your heart center. Close your eyes. And if you're going to do this practice with me, then I uh, suggest you repeat. Dear my beloved divine creator, my name is, state your name, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. Give love to your creator. I love you, respect you, honor you. I bow my head in the deepest gratitude to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear all of the beings of light, and you can list them one by one if you wish to. Okay, Jesus, Buddha, Mother, Mary, Kuan Yin, Krishna, Vishnu, all the beings of light, angels, healing angels, archangels. 
I love you, honor you, respect you. Could you please come and as appropriate, I would be deeply honored to receive any blessings you're willing to give to assist in the healing of this relationship that I have called. Now you call the relationship. Dear the soul of and list the person or persons that you want to do relationship uh, forgiveness with. Please come. Dear the soul of my relationship with this person or these persons. Could you also please come? So now the room is packed. There's probably hundreds, maybe thousands of souls in your room, whether you see them or not, because heaven's quite big and a lot of beings of light came. Okay? And now <clears throat> we start into our forgiveness. Okay? Remember to visualize these souls in front of you. Now remember, these souls are really happy to do forgiveness. They are not the personality that hurts you. The personality that hurts you got stuck in life. The, that personality's soul very much wishes for a win-win positive scenario to occur because that person's soul does not want to go again and again and again. That person's soul wants everything to be fixed now. So their souls are very happy to be present and very happy to have this conference with you. So we communicate with them. Dear this uh, dear the soul of, and state that person's name, you know, John, Mac, Wendy, Betty, whatever the name, I love you. I may not love you near as much now because of our relationship issues, but soul to soul, I love you. And at one point, I did. Say it, whatever, whatever you can say, okay? We have had many problems. We have argued, we have done this. There has been experiences in this relationship where there was great suffering. You can say stuff like, you broke my heart, you cheated, whatever you need to say to get off your chest. Okay. These things occur. Take a minute and state the things that occurred. Try to do it from an observational statement. Not like, you did this to me. Don't do it like that. This occurred, this occurred, this occurred, this occurred. Take a minute and state those things. And you can state how you felt about it. This was very painful for me. It created what? What emotion did it create? Did it create fear? Did it create distrust? Did it bring you feelings of abandonment? What were the emotions you experienced? When these things occurred, I felt, okay, and move beyond anger. Get clear on what you felt. I felt. This, you know, I felt angry, I felt upset, I felt uh, disappointed, I felt abandoned, I felt uh, a lack of trust, uh, fear, I felt, um, you know, worry, whatever it is, speak those feelings because that's what's underneath. That's why your heart's not open, that's why you're not able to forgive, you're not able to get to the root of the feelings that came up as a result of this disagreement. And then state what you're needing. You're talking to the soul. And what I am really needing is to feel safe and to feel like I can trust and to feel calm and worry-free. Uh, I'm needing to feel uh, hopeful and uh, uh, that we can get back together or hopeful for, that our relationship can be healed. Whatever it is you, you're needing, state that. And pay attention to your heart. You'll notice that in stating the deeper feelings and what you're needing, notice how your heart is starting to open and starting to unwind the suffering. Pay attention. What are you needing? State that to this soul.
Now maybe this, this person is continually being aggressive and creating problems in your life. What I'm needing is uh, a clean separation where I'm no longer being bothered. What I'm needing is uh, a knowingness that I can move forward in my life, right? Uh, state these things. <clears throat> now we work with asking for and offering forgiveness. So let's ask for forgiveness first. Open your heart. If I have ever done these same hurtful things to you, and you can state them. If I have ever taken advantage of you, uh, been belittling to you, physically harmed you, if I've ever cheated on you, if I've ever yelled at you, whatever they did to you that you just listed, you stated. If I have ever done these things to you, in times that I cannot remember, because you probably can't remember doing those things to them. From the bottom of my heart, I sincerely apologize. I could never imagine doing these same kinds of things to you, but I know it's a possibility that I could have. And if I have, there is no excuse. I would not want to do those things to others. But if I have, then I sincerely ask your forgiveness because I would not want you to suffer the way I have suffered. Now, of course, the angry part of you may have wanted them to suffer, but move to the heart. You would not want anybody to suffer the way you have suffered, right? So offer forgiveness from that space. And... I no longer wish to close my heart to everybody else in my world and I no longer wish to hold on to this anger. I no longer wish to hold on to this fear, this worry, this, this uh, closed heart feeling. I no longer want this in my life. So I'm not saying that what you did is okay, but I want to offer complete forgiveness so that we no longer have this imbalance in our energies. I want to release this negative energy and replace it with positive energy. I want to release this old negative information and replace it with positive information. That means I need to open my heart and completely forgive you. Because if I did this to you first, I can understand why in this lifetime you may have reminded me how unpleasant it was. And I don't want to be on the rat wheel of life, harming you and then you harming me in the same way. I'm going to rise above. I'm going to offer you unconditional forgiveness. And if I harmed you, please give me your unconditional forgiveness. Open your heart to this person. Be authentic in that communication. I'll give you one minute to be authentic. Now you give love to yourself. Dear myself, my soul, dear me, my two-year-old, my five-year-old, my teenager, my 18-year-old that fell in love with this person that hurt my heart, my 20-year-old that stuck around even though it shouldn't have, my 30-year-old that finally divorced and this person still hurts me. Every year of my life, dear me, Right? Connect with you for all the years. You may have made choices that you wished you wouldn't have. I love me. I made the best choices that were available to me at that time with the awareness that I had at that time. I forgive myself for, for uh, judging myself. I forgive myself for putting myself down. I forgive myself for making the choices that I have. In fact, I love myself because this has allowed me to permanently release this spiritual debt. Now, if you're in a current relationship, I forgive myself for reacting negatively in a consistent negative pattern. I forgive myself for not 
being able to speak more clearly the feelings and the needs that I have to my spouse. I forgive myself for not taking responsibility in improving the relationship and my communication in the relationship. I forgive myself for blaming myself. I love myself. Love yourself. You're just doing the best you can with what you have, guys. I love myself. I'm a good soul. I'm doing the best I can. I refuse to continue to blame myself for whatever happened in the relationship. But I will improve the parts that I have responsibility for. Forgive yourself. Love yourself. Very important. And now we apply mantra. Let us apply divine forgiveness. These souls that you've just communicated with, they're very grateful. At the soul level, I tell you, these souls are crying because they so much wanted you to get to this space of consciousness so you can let it all behind, move forward with your life, not do the rat wheel doing this again and again. These souls are extremely grateful. Okay, So let us bring even higher divine frequency by singing the mantra of divine forgiveness. So as we do this, visualize and see all heaven is blessed. The heaven is here. They're blessing this. All the souls are here. They're ready. Your heart is opening up. See your hearts opening up. See the souls you've invited hugging. See the, the spiritual blockages in their relationship clearing. Visualize all this as we sing. Divine forgiveness. And tap your heart chakra. Let it open up and release the pain. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, God's forgiveness, much bigger than ours. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine divine forgiveness I forgive you mean it when you say that you forgive me bring love peace harmony bring love Peace, harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive. Really open your heart, guys. You, you forgive me. Open your heart as big as the divine. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. See the soul of the relationship, the soul between you two. Clear the blockages, pure light. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring Love, peace, harmony. You're not saying it's okay what they did. You're saying, I don't want to hold on to it anymore. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. 
the need, bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you. Forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony. Now in your mind's eye, either bow to the other soul and see them bow to you, or give them a hug fully releasing the blockages, letting it go, letting light and love into your heart. Open your heart. Release the suffering. I no longer need it. I never deserved it. I love myself and I fully release this old memory. I am happy, I am healthy, I love myself. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So check in with yourself. What was the experience like for you? How do you feel? What was your level of heaviness before? What is your level of lightness now? Some of you came in late. You should at least get a little preface to the practice if you're not familiar with it at all. And if you are, even better, get a deeper understanding that you may not have understood before. For, uh, I'm going to uh, just chat a little bit, but I look forward to seeing your comments. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, it is important you know, people say, how long do I do this? Is one time enough? I don't know. When you see that person, does it still bring pain? Obviously, once was not enough. If you think about that person, does it still bring pain? You need to do it more and more. Jen, I want you to go deeper. I feel really good is not a feeling. Okay? I feel what? Find deeper feelings. I feel, I'm not going to give you words. There's at least 10 more words you can use. All of us, we need to be better at identifying our feelings and our needs because when we only hold on to anger or resentment or uh, like nothing's ever going to change, that's because we have not got to the root of what we're really feeling and what we're really needing. Okay? We got to get away from saying, you, you, you did this to me, me, me. That's not going to help anybody okay she feels relieved better try to find two more everybody try to find I want you to tell me your feelings before and now because you need the practice you need the practice of feelings So here's something I'll post for you guys to give you an idea of just how little we use these. <clears throat> that link, if you copy and paste it, I don't know why it's not clickable, uh, is an image. There it is. And that has at least 30 feelings, probably 15 of which you could express to really get to the root of how much lighter you're feeling. Okay. Um, also, you need a list of what you are needing, right? A list of needs. So let's let's find a list here. A needs list. Good. So I'll drop this link in here for you.
and here's a third link okay if you truly want to fix your relationships learn to communicate much better than you do I've given you three links one is a list of feelings one is a list of needs and the third one is the most important it's called the Center for Nonviolent Communication. It's a, it's a, it's a org, dot org, okay? So it's not a profit-based organization. It's an organization that teaches the language of feelings and needs. Uh, and if you truly want healthy relationships, not kidding, then adopt their message, apply their message, take their courses, be, you know, bring the significant other into those courses. Your relationship will improve a million percent one two million percent because the problem with most human beings is we speak in four or five emotions and we never get to the root and we point fingers outside of us learn a much healthier language okay let's see some of the responses I feel relieved I feel lighter and relieved um, able to see a little clearer uh, joy home not as guarded or agitated good Hopeful, grateful, strong, level, great, good use of expressive words, uh, feeling movement. Jen says, I feel released, relieved, happy, filled with joy, and don't feel angry or blocked. It feels free-flowing and kindness. Wonderful. Doesn't that feel a lot better than to say, I feel good? Which one feels better, right? Smitta, feel lighter with inner peace. Wonderful. Okay? <clears throat> so... Uh, today I tell you so many people suffer in relationships and they could be much much easier to fix the problems how many of you have a relationship issue with somebody and it goes on for days you know it doesn't have to it could be resolved in 10 minutes you use soul conferencing I taught last Thursday you use this forgiveness practice I taught today put them together you've got their solution for all relationship problems if it doesn't work the first time when do you do it again Again, you just do it that night. You keep doing it till it goes away. Use feelings. Use needs. Use them for yourself. 50% <clears throat> of us have such blockages in our heart because of our lack of self-love. Use feelings and needs to talk to yourself. What am I really feeling? I'm, I'm depressed. I know that. What's really going on? Pull out the list. Well, I'm feeling angry because they did this to me. Okay, go deeper. I'm feeling angry because I'm needing... To, to trust I'm feeling abandoned I'm, you know when you get into those exact feelings and needs your depression will lift right why because you're getting to the real stuff that you've been shoving down that you don't have the vocabulary to comprehend so empower yourself empower yourself with your own uh, uh, you have you have the answers right in front of you Master Shah has brought us these skill sets. Forgiveness is the key to happiness in life. Not kidding. Apply it every day. Apply these other three things I've just given you the links for. It will change your world. Not kidding. But as with everything, sometimes the world comes on, beats us over the head, and we forget. Try not to forget if you want happiness in your relationships. Okay? Uh, enjoying your comments? Good. See? I am very grateful and elated, excited, hopeful, and happy that you are all responding in positive feelings. And now identify what your needs are. You know, I'm really needing to do more of this because it will fulfill my need to feel uh, empowered and my need to feel hopeful for our for the future of my relationship. Right? See how much more rounded it feels. Beautiful. Congratulations. If you came in late, you missed an exceptional live stream. Go back and watch it from the beginning, which will start in a few minutes because I'm going to say bye-bye for now. I invite you to join me on Sunday as we chant love, peace, and harmony to serve those with the condition of cancer. 6 p.m. Hawaii time, 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight in the Eastern Zone, 5 a.m. in Europe, <clears throat> 6 a.m. in the Central Eastern time zone. It's going to be 9.30 a.m. in India. And it will be um, 12, 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Australia <clears throat> and 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the land of the Kiwi. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. I will see you then. If you came in late, make sure you watch the, uh, the video again. Bye-bye.